All right guys, Darren from Honest Money and welcome back to another video. Now before I get into this video, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone that helped make last week's video a huge success. And we had lots of new subscribers off the back of that. So welcome to everyone that has joined the channel in the past week. So with the imminent recession just around the corner and probably the job losses that are gonna come with that, uh, many of us are looking to save some money on our monthly bills. So what I wanna do in this video is go through some of the most common monthly bills that we're all faced with and some of the steps that you can actually take today to start saving some money. So the first thing that I want to take a look at, and that is I want you to guys to take a look at your entertainment provider. You know, whether this is Virgin, Sky, or someone else, I want you to see how much you're currently paying per month for your services. And the reason that this is at the very top of my list is I see this with lots of my friends and families that they are paying an absolute fortune um, compared to what they could actually be paying if they just took a bit of time to look into it and negotiate a new deal. So many people sign up for these bundles maybe three, four, five years ago, paying maybe 30 to 40 pound for a good entertainment bundle. And then over time through the inflationary price increases that these companies enforce on us, and also with prices going up when you come out at the end of your contract, you end up paying 50, 60, 70 pound or even more uh, for some of these services and you really don't need to be paying that much. So the first thing that I want you guys to do and that is to contact your existing provider. So if you're coming to the end of your contract, most providers will negotiate with kind of 30 days to go before the end of your contract or if you've been out of contract for a long time, make sure you contact your existing provider. I know many people are actually reluctant to switch provider as they just naturally either prefer one or the other. Um, however, many providers will actually offer you a better deal just by staying with them. Many of them have retentions department set up specifically for this. So contact your existing provider, explain to them that you're either coming to the end of your contract or you're out of contract and are maybe considering swapping providers and hopefully they should be able to sort you out with a very good deal at a much lower price than you are currently paying or would be paying if you continue to go out of the contract that is ending. Uh, the next thing I want you to do is also when you're calling that provider is to discuss with them any services you don't currently use. So many of us have signed up for these big bundles with hundreds or thousands of TV channels and actually we don't really use them. So, so consider which of those services you can drop off. So if you maybe only use a couple of TV channels, maybe you don't need the advanced packages, you can just settle for some of the more basic packages. However, keep in mind that some of these bundles do actually work out cheaper by bundling them. So sometimes it's better to bundle on something you don't necessarily want just to get the cheaper price. But to definitely discuss this with the retentions team and they should be able to advise how to get the best possible deal. And also one thing to consider is some of the alternatives. So for example, on my media bundle, I don't actually have any TV package. I just have an internet and landline telephone and then I have a separate subscription for Netflix and Prime Video. So consider how you can get your media at a cheaper rate than just buying it all through one massive bundle from a single provider. The next thing that I want you guys to have a think about, and that is your groceries, how much you spend on groceries and how you actually spend that money. There are three things in particular that I want you to think about. The first one is that I want you to consider shopping online. Now, if you prefer shopping with Aldi or Lidl, then ignore this point as it isn't currently possible to shop with those. However, if you're with a traditional big boy supermarket in the UK, pretty much all of them now offer online shopping. And I think it is a great way of actually saving money as you can see your basket added up as you go. You can also plan things and make sure that you stick to that budget. So when you get to the checkout and it says you've got 70, 80 pound in your basket, it's very easy to remove those items without the embarrassment of maybe doing it at the checkouts in person. So I would strongly recommend shopping online if you don't already do that, because for me, it was a very effective way of controlling my budget and also saving on the amount I spend. The next thing I want you to do is consider planning your meals in advance. So we normally plan for maybe five meals per week and allocate one or two evenings for maybe takeaways instead. By doing that, I can ensure that I buy the correct ingredients for those meals. And I'm not sitting there saying I'm gonna have this meal on this day, but generally we'll plan for five or six meals and then we'll have them in any particular order whenever you actually fancy those meals. So think about planning your meals in advance as it will help you with your spending. And also it will help you have food that you actually want in the evenings rather than getting to the evenings, not having any dinners that you actually want and you end up spending a fortune on takeaway instead. And then finally, try to stick to your budget. And again, this is much easier with shopping online. If you allocate your something made 50 pound or 75 pound per week for a weekly shop that you do online, it's much easier to stick with that budget if you're shopping online. Up next, we have your mortgage payment or your rental payment. Now, unfortunately, if you have a rental property, there probably isn't a huge amount you can do to reduce your monthly rental. So this is mainly gonna focus on the mortgage side of things. So the first thing that I want you to do, if you have a mortgage, if you're coming to the end of a deal, if you've been out of a deal for a while, or if you're in a mortgage deal where you have no early repayment charge, which is very, very rare, then I want you to see what other deals are about at the moment. Interest rates are super, super low. And as you can see in that example on the screen, for every 1% that you can save on a 200,000 pound mortgage over 25 years, that will effectively save you around 100 pound per month. So it's certainly worth shopping around for a new deal if you're in the position to shop around for a new mortgage at the moment. 
The other thing I want you to consider is whether you should change the term of your mortgage. Now, I know everyone always encourages people to shorten the mortgage term as much as possible and also overpay when possible. However, when times are difficult like they may become in the next few months, it may actually be worth extending your mortgage by a few years so that you can actually afford the payments now and have a few years on at the end rather than make yourself really, really struggle now just to save a couple of years at the end of the mortgage. The final thing on this page that I want you guys to think about and that is whether you can save money with your mobile phone. So if you've had a phone for maybe a couple of years as most mobile phone contracts are two years in the UK. If you've had that phone for at least two years and you're still happy with that phone, maybe you might want to consider switching to a SIM only deal. In the contract period of your mobile contract, you're paying for the phone itself as well. So once that contract ends, you don't really want to be paying for the phone continuing going forward. So hopefully you can reduce a contract that maybe cost you anywhere from 30 to 60 to 70 pound per month down to as little as 10 pound per month, which is a substantial saving and definitely something that's worth considering, especially if you're happy with your phone. However, if you're not happy with your phone and you are thinking about upgrading, maybe consider not upgrading to the most well-known phones that are usually the flagship. So maybe avoid the latest Samsungs and the latest Apples. Maybe look at flagships from last year. You know, the previous generation flagships are still very, very good and are at a much more affordable price point. Also, many of the mid-range and budget phones are very, very good. So think about how you use your phones, what features are actually essential to use, and then find the right phone for you at the right price point. Up next, I want you to have a think about your energy provider. So that covers your gas and your electric. Um, and if you're off grid, then maybe it will cover your oil instead. So the first thing I want you to do is compare the deal that you're currently getting with deals from other providers. There's lots of websites such as Uswitch that you can use to do that. See what your daily rate is, see what your standing charges are, see how much you're paying per unit, then compare all of those costs. Also, see if there's any other deals available from your current provider. Many people that lock you into a fixed rate deal don't currently charge exit fees at the moment. So sometimes it is possible to leave mid-contract without any exit fees or with quite low exit fees. So definitely see what your contract currently says and see if there are any better deals available. I also want you to have a think about is whether you can reduce your consumption at all. So some of the obvious things, one is to adjust your thermostat down by a degree or two, especially as we're approaching these warmer months. Sometimes people forget to reduce their thermostat. So reduce that thermostat right down. Also, if you've got TRVs, which are thermostatic radiator valves, um, turn those right down in the rooms where you don't actually need heat. So for example, I'm in a four-bed house at the moment uh, and one or two of the rooms we don't use on a frequent basis so we have those turned right down to maybe two or less just to keep them ticking over but not actually heating the rooms fully also if you've got lights that you use frequently so I'm not saying go around and place every light bulb in your house with LEDs as that's going to be quite an upfront cost but for example with us we have a couple of standing lights in the lounge which are on pretty much all of the evening when we're at home watching TV um, I've just swapped those to LED bulbs so they're almost free to run they use up so little energy so have a think about where you've got lights on all the time maybe it's in the kitchen somewhere else think about whether you can swap those lights out because those savings will add up over time. And also, I know many people are against this and this is very much a my might topic, but consider switching over to a smart meter so you can actually see what you're consuming every day and you can see what devices in your house are using the most energy. Next up, we have water. Now, unfortunately, there isn't a huge amount you can do about your provider. Usually not possible to change your water provider, uh, but you can request a water meter. So if you haven't already had one installed, and many, many people have, as it's kind of a national rollout, but if you don't have a water meter, consider requesting one, especially if you have a medium to small family, as often you will save money by switching to a water meter. Also, these next two points I know are really, really obvious, but try to only do full loads on your washing machine and your dishwasher. That will save some water and make sure you check everything for leaks and drips. So check your toilets to make sure the system isn't running constantly. Check your taps and make sure you haven't got drips as if they're going 24 seven, it will certainly add up with your water consumption. This next point I've kind of grouped together as insurances, but it applies to things such as your house insurance and your car insurance. And there's a few points that I want you to consider. Uh, the first thing is never ever accept a renewal quote. So if it's your car insurance and your house insurance, never ever accept that renewal quote. They are almost always increasing the price every year. So never accept that. Make sure you contact your insurance company and try to renegotiate a cheaper renewal. It's nearly always possible to get a lower price doing that. Uh, the next thing, if you don't want to renew with your current provider, is to use the comparison websites to get a short list of providers who like your profile. So there are hundreds of providers on these comparison websites and just by putting in your information you can get a list of maybe three to five providers who actually offer you a really low price and then you can contact them directly to see if lower prices are available and the final point is always pick up the phone always call an insurance company whether it's about a renewal or whether it's about a new quote they're usually able to offer an additional discount if you call them directly and negotiate with them and finally we have your council tax now unfortunately there is probably not a huge amount you can actually do to save money on your council tax short of moving house 
but it is possible to reduce your monthly bill. Now, many councils will expect you to pay in 10 monthly payments per year. However, it is possible to contact them and request a 12 monthly payment profile instead. So every year, I contact my council and say something, I'd like to pay over 12 equal payments rather than over 10 equal payments. And with council tax bills in excess of 2,000 pounds for many, many people, this can make your monthly payments that little bit more manageable. So hopefully you guys have found those points useful. Hopefully you can use them to save a bit of money on your monthly outgoings. If you did, I'd really appreciate if you could scroll down, hit that like button. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you wanna see more advice relating to business and personal finance, make sure you're subscribed. And if you have any of your own tips for saving money on your monthly outgoings, make sure you let me know in the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next video.